Last week on Sport Fishing, we ran part one of our mini long range trip to the Cortez and Tanner Banks out of San Diego. The skipper of the big game put us in the right spot because by the end of our first day, we had landed a large number of bluefin tuna. This week, we pick up where we left off with lots of fish. Problem is, some are being so picky we're dropping to a lighter line just to get them to bite. But that makes for some pretty exciting action as well. So stay tuned for this week's episode of Sport Fishing. Sport Fishing with Dan Hernandez is brought to you by Sport Chalet and by Berkeley Trilane, super strong fishing line. Welcome back. This is day two of our three day adventure. It's early morning here. It's coming up on about 7.15. We've already landed three or four nice sized bluefin tuna. Now we're still anchored on the south edge of the Tanner Bank and the guys are just going ahead and fly lining baits using these uh, large hooks with uh, sardines just fishing off the corners and the fish have been coming through. Well, let me see if I can go hook me one this morning. The Tackle Box. Tips and information to help every angler improve their chances on the water. This week the Tackle Box is brought to you by the San Diego Sport Fishing Council. For this time of year, you know, you get into a late season tuna bite, you really don't know what's going to happen. So bring a wide selection of rods and reels with you. Make sure they're properly balanced for one another and matched up. Now, my basic outfit would be something like this. For live bait fishing, I got a pin Jig Master 500, and I have it on a pin custom power stick rod. I'm going to fill this reel up with 30 pound test big game line. And what I'm going to do with that, depending on the size of the bait, big sardines, small mackerel, whatever it is, match my hook size. These are the new hooks by Mustad, the Accurate Points, and you want to have a wide selection of hooks, anywhere from a size 2 all the way up to a 6 -o. These are size 4s, and for the small sardines, these would be perfect. Now, if the fish get active and we get the bigger fish moving through, you don't want to get stuck with just fishing 30-pound test line. You want to have the flexibility to move up to 40, 60, maybe even 80 if the fish get wide open. Now, reels you can do that with, this is a pen 3 -o. This would be okay borderline to fish with 40. I like it with 30 when I'm fishing with iron jigs or something, but I've added a Tiburon kit to make the reel a little bit stronger. With tuna, remember, the reels can't be strong enough. Now this is a beautiful reel, this is a pen 4-0. This is my choice for fishing 40 pound test line or for the smaller tunas, I'll even put 60 on it, button down the drag and I can horse the fish right in. Remember, when the fish crash the boat, they're only gonna be there for a short time. So you have to have your gear properly matched and ready to go so you can take advantage of it while the fish are there. Now if the fish do get wide open, which you can try, is moving over and forget about using live bait for a while, but go with an iron jig. This is a Salus 6X Junior. It's a great jig for fishing straight up and down yo-yo fishing, and for tuna fishing, yellowtail too, it's a great iron jig. Throw it into the tunas, and put it in free spool, let it go down deeper. The key here is the bigger fish are below those school sized fish. Wind this back as fast as you can, and the tunas will bite it. Well, let's get back on the water and catch us some fish. Nice. That was kind of creepy there. <laughs> so we tangled in five lines. And we had to get around the anchor. 
We did that and the fish just took off. Well, we're fishing at the Cortez now. We're about 15 miles from where we started out at Tanner Bank. This is the Cortez Bank. And this is the first fury of action we've had here. We got about five fish going right now. All around, but oh, there's another one, there's six. Fishing with a pin 3 -0. I added a Tiburon kit onto it to make the reel a little bit stronger. You need all the strength you can get when you're chasing tuna. We got a nice medium action rod here with 30 pound test trialing big game line. This fish is giving this line a test. And then it's starting to go up toward the bow again. Let's see if we can get them away from everybody. All we're trying to do is turn the fish to come in toward the boat so we can get a chance of gaffing them. All I'm gonna try to do now is just take a crank at a time, lift up on the rod, use my thumb on the high pylon and the line and just lift them. All we're trying to do is turn the fish up toward the boat. Oh, there he is, deep color. Yeah! <laughs> Oh, this is my biggest fish so far today. All right. Thanks a lot, nice gaff. Nice gaff. Beautiful bluefin tuna. Got that on the fly line fishing out here on the Cortez. It's one of the advantages on these multi-day trips. We fished the tanner and the fish moved from the tanner bank and we came over to the Cortez and we found the fish again. Thanks a lot, boy. Well, stay tuned and we'll be right back with a lot more action aboard the big game. made a short move. We were fishing over at the Tanner Bank for the past day and a half, and it got kind of slow. We got invaded with seals and had about 10, 15 boats on the spot, so Skipper made a decision to make a move. About 15 miles away is Cortez Bank, and that's where we are now. It's basically the same thing. Uh, high water spot out in the middle of nowhere, actually. We're a little bit closer towards San Pedro, about 10, 12 miles closer than we are to San Diego. And what's going on is the majority of the guys are still fishing the same way, fishing fly line bait, and we have sardines for bait, looking for the tuna and the yellowtail. Here, you're, we're more likely to get see some yellowtail. We didn't see any yellowtail at Tanner. And over here, too, at Cortez, you're more likely to find the bigger tuna, tuna up to 50 pounds or so. So that's what they're fishing for. There's a few of us, though, who put sinkers on to see if we can get some good eating fish, some rockfish, red snapper, lingcod, something like that. So that's what I have on here in a dropper loop all the way in the bottom with the live sardine and see what happens. Let's see if we can pick up a fish. Okay, a couple bigger fish lines around here. Okay, this is the dropper loop that I'm using. One twist to it, we have a real long leader on it. A little bit longer for lingcod fishing, that's why it's like this. And added a swivel on it for the sinker. They could change different weight sinkers. And we're just dropping it all the way to the bottom. It's about 65 feet deep here. Just toss it out. Now, if there were a lot of tuna around, I'd, I'd be fishing the surface. But things are a little slow right now, so I'm gonna fish the bottom, see if we can pick up a big bottom fish. And then all you do is just let it get all the way down there, put the reel in gear, take out the slack, and just feel contact with the bottom. Let that sinker just bounce up and down off the bottom. What I'm using for this type of fishing out here, because the water, this far offshore water, you oftentimes find the bigger fish. Ooh, deep water banks. I got a larger reel. It's a pin 6 
added a Tiburon kit on it to make it narrower, but it still gives me all the power of a large uh, 6L Rio, big drag washers, just a little bit narrower, a little bit easier to handle, and the short tuna rod. Just in case a big tuna come by, I can go ahead and just cut this rig off, put a 6L bait hook on there, and boom, I'm ready to go for the big tunas. fishing at the Cortez, and I got a couple of fish today on fishing 30-pound test line. Things got a little slow, so I tried something a little bit different. I went all the way down to 10. It's 10-pound test, big game line. This is a bait caster reel. It's made by Daiwa. This is a normal rig that I use for calico bass fishing, like for like Catalina Island or San Clemente Island. Got a graphite stick here, eight-foot graphite stick, and uh, threw out a sardine with a mustad hook, and we hooked up into a tuna. And I don't recommend this. Here, let me get around here. I don't recommend fishing like this. You, you really want to go with the heavier stuff. But when it gets finicky, you go ahead and do whatever you have to do to get bit, and that's what we're doing here. I'm really kind of surprised we're still on the fish this long. Been on it for about 15 minutes. I thought he was going to just spool me right away. He just took off, but we got deep color. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Color. Yeah. That's 10 pound test. Nice job. Oh, thanks, Bob. 10 pound test, big game line. Produced this fish, about 20 pound bluefin tuna. Can't do it much better than that. Woo! That's awesome. I can't believe that. 10 pound test line, bait caster reel, graphite rod, perfect for calico bass. That's awesome. Next to me here is Andre, and on the far right is Dylan. These are the only two yellowtail we've had taken so far on our trip. This is day two, and we're fishing at Cortez Bank. We made that move from Tanner to Cortez, and Cortez is famous for these yellowtail. We call these home guard because they're the larger yellowtail. They stay here year round. Congratulations, guys. These are quality fish. Thanks, man. Well, stay tuned, and we'll be right back with a lot more action aboard the big game. We're back on the 10 pound test again. I'm fishing 10 pound test. We're on the edge of the Cortez, and it's day two of our three day adventure. Now, I wouldn't recommend fishing 10 pound test when you go tuna fishing, but uh, we're doing pretty good on the fish. I've already gotten quite a few fish, and I want to try something a little bit different. 
The fish had gotten a little picky for a while. The gear that I'm fishing with here is my basic calico bass gear for Catalina Island. But uh, it's doing okay here for the tuna. <laughs> fish like gear like this, you really can't be too forceful on the fish. There's another bluef in there. What's that, your 10th fish? On this 10 pound, you really can't force them. One of the fun things about light line is it just forces you to take time. But one of the things I don't like about light line is it opens yourself up to a lot of problems. You can get a lot of tangles. You have to worry about seals and sharks, things that you can avoid with the heavier line. Just take what the fish gives us, take our time. Oh, big boil. Oh, what's nice about tuna fishing, even though we're on structure, it's only about 60 feet deep here, we don't have to worry so much like tuna, like if we were yellowtail fishing. Yellowtail runs straight to that structure, cuts you off. But tuna, they like to stay up toward the surface more. They'll go down, but they won't go all the way down the structure. Oh, we got fish crashing all over the place. Got six, seven guys on fish, all on the stern. I'm up here on the bow. I think this fish saw the boat. Oh, he's taking off. Look at that. He's going. He stop finally. Boy, took off about 200 yards of line. Let's see if we can get some of this back. Okay, you're okay. Wanna go down? Go ahead. <laughs> Watch out for the anchor line. I'll fight this fish as long as it takes. Okay. You underneath me? Go ahead. Go ahead. There's a shark out there. Oh, I hate that when there's sharks out there. Especially with this light line. And let me get over all you guys. <laughs> over, under, playing through. Come on down. Well, we got plenty of action here aboard the big game. He's finally starting to come up. Come on over. Doing the tuna shuffle here. See him? There he is, deep color. He's starting to tire, finally, finally, he's starting to tire. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. That's all right. 10 pound test lined. <laughs> Fishtails is brought to you by Checkpoint Hook and Knife Sharpeners. This week's Fishtails comes to us from Dave Hickel of Los Angeles and should help to inspire all anglers to get out there and go fishing. This photo was taken while Dave was fighting a 35-pound yellowfin tuna aboard the Pacifica that runs out of San Diego. Well, thanks, Dave. It's always great to see anglers out there who won't let anything keep them off the boats. For being our fishtails this week, Dave will receive a free copy of my book, Saltwater Fishing Adventures. Remember, every fishtail used on the air receives a free book. Send your fishtails, photos, or videos, and any questions or comments to Sport Fishing, P.O. Box 90, Montebello, California, 90640. Be sure to watch Sport Fishing next week as we head back to the Sierras for some high mountain trout fishing near the Tioga Pass. Standing next to me is our skipper, Robert Cooperstein, and he's going to be giving us this week's tip of the week. Well, this week's tip of the week is I'd like to stress the importance of line. The freshness of line makes all the difference in the world. Today we caught fish on anything from, well, Dan caught a couple of fish on 10 pound, but it was good strong line. I don't recommend that, but all the way up to 50 pound test line. Uh, line is the lifeline between you and your fish. When you come out fishing, make sure that you have good fresh line. If it's been on the reel for more than 45 or 60 days and you've used it once or twice, get some new line. It's an inexpensive way to ensure that you make your catch.
And that's this week's tip from Robert. I'd like to thank you, Rob, for having us out. Everybody from Sport Fishing Crew, we had a great time. Your whole staff was excellent. Thank you very much. And if much. you've never been out on the big game, I really suggest you do it. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and you'll join us next week when we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing. If it sounds like it's raining, it's not. That's all. Oh, look at that. All that white wire is nothing but tuna going through the baits. That's incredible. Like to purchase a copy of today's episode of Sport Fishing, send $15 plus $2 shipping and handling along with today's date to Sport Fishing, PO Box 90, Montebello, California, 90640.